live from New York. It's sat Chris, away. That asshole knew we were going live, and he still decided to throw food in his face. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Tonight we are not doing cred. We are actually doing Between the Rolls a show I have not been on in a very, very long time. Uh, You've time. seen these other two uh, once or twice or three times now. Um, I don't <coughs> honestly know their names. They're not in my show, so I don't care about them. Honestly. <laughs> uh, the funny part, it's true. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, honesty is the best policy, I think, Kyle. So yeah. That's what I figured. And someone didn't tell me I still had my grandfather's uh, portrait on his uh, We totally Oops. told so I should him. probably Oops. change that real We totally quick here. told him you <laughs> had that up there. He's... <laughs> oh is that God. better? That's a better picture. Very All good. Right, good. All right. that, that's your grandma there. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the games that we had last week. We're going to talk about uh, games coming up in the future. And then we're going to talk about some random, completely random out of the hat bag topic that oh, has sure. absolutely nothing to do with anything <coughs> that has happened here at Murder Hobo Inc. in any way, shape, or form. But before we get on to that, let me just say... Actually, I'm going to introduce you to the other people, and then I'm going to go through. Dude, the thing, I can I do it, man. I got, got it. You got it. You got it. Go, well, Carol. Go. All right. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive to see all the old episodes and this week's episodes. Uh, let's see. You can chat with us on Discord. You can buy our crap, which is actually the sweatshirt. It was one of the T. I you can't see. Let's see. Let's see. I can turn around. <laughs> Uh, it's, I've got one of the murder hobo, uh, one of the cast member things there. Uh, nice. From, That's right. You uh, can buy it back. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing, Kyle? All right. So, anyways, what the fuck, Kyle? You're weird. It did not work out like I thought it was. It, it, oh, no, it did not. Oh my it, gosh! It no. looked like a friggin' alien. Oh, so you know let's what? See. I know oh, oh, oh! And of course, if you there. don't want to check out these lovely faces. You can download our podcast on, uh, where is it again? Podbean. Podbean. Podbean? Podbean. Podbean, yeah. That's where I listen to hey, it. You know, I know, Strangely it's enough, I actually other... listened to my first Murder Hobo podcast on Podbean this last week. It did was I wow. get, Let's see. So did I get everything? I think. And I you survived, everything. so you're okay, right? <laughs> no. No, oh. I didn't. <laughs> I said, I believe that's everything, sir. Oh, I forgot the sponsors. 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 Oh, man. Yeah. Do you want to do the sponsors? Because you you friggin' have your own. You have Guys, your we have some wonderful sponsors tonight. Let me just tell you about Pirate Dog Dice, uh, the homemakers of the dog poop dice. Uh, it is amazing. It is wonderful. Everyone should have a dog poop dice. They even bought a brand new dog just so they could get the poop fresh from the source. Ooh. Now you say, man, you can't polish a turd, but you can make a 20 dot sided die. I take that back. I'm so poop. sorry. I regret not actually doing this. You really should have done that. Should have done it. Now, here's the cool thing is it glitters if it lands on a 20, but if it Jesus. lands on a one, it smells like dog shit. And uh, which leads us to our next sponsors. Oddfish Games and their Adventure Sense. Do you need to really drown out the smell of that new die you got at Pirate Dog Dice? Adventure Sense. <laughs> get uh, Old Library, get the Tavern Scene. Putrid Sewers will actually magnify the smell. But, I mean, it's appropriate if your uh, players are in Putrid Sewers, as it happens. Uh, or my personal favorite, uh, Carol's... The imaginary... Choleric. Yeah, because it's imaginary. So he imagines this cat thing. fence post, uh, and uh -huh. that was during their sponsors of the uh, the how to RPG with your cat, which is a Kickstarter, which I believe is over now. But did I'm you just Freudian slip say Kickstarter? Is that what I just heard? <laughs> yeah, okay. It's not like uh, Kickstarter. It's, this is actually just. But it was like vodka. months. <laughs> it was months ago when that. It was so months ago. I uh -huh. think they're going to do more though. And then you got that wonderful uh, Carol's Choleric Cat. Post. Oh, and Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful smell. It smells a little bit like cat pee. Oh, and my God. Love in the Time of Cholera. The book, not the actual <sighs> traveling back in time. That would be amazing. 
You are such unique. an idiot, Kyle. You are so- <laughs> the other projects they have is the Shine Project. If you're coming up with a uh, a, a novel and you're trying to figure out, you know, what, where do I even start? Check out the Shine Project. They will help you one, two, three steps in writing an awesome novel. Or what I like to use it for is to help out with my GMing. They are actually coming out with a GM specific one here in the future. Keep an eye on that. I appreciate it. I've read through it all. The one thing I love the most is uh, it asks questions that I uh, honestly, I don't have the two brain cells to touch that <laughs> I would ask myself, to be honest with you. Somehow they make me the host of the show tonight. Isn't that weird? The, I don't you know, know what you did. For some reason, they have me talk about the game and have you do the hosting duties. I'm not really sure why. It's because then I don't actually have to answer questions. Otherwise, people would just. I think you're going to have to answer questions. I may actually have to ask you a question. Ooh. Okay. And now, if I look at my script here, I'm supposed to tell you about at murderhobocon.com. Oh, he no, gets no, no. live this yeah. week right yeah. here. I think so I meant make sure to you go see Frank. murderhobocon. Frank, you need to, to update your the agenda, man. Very timely. Yeah, very timely. <laughs> it just hasn't updated the agenda. It just, <laughs> oh just sends it off every week. Same thing. All right, guys, I am your host tonight. I am Kyle, the DM of Cred, Cthulhu Rises, yeah. Everyone Dies. Uh, lately, I've been so wrapped up in torturing my players that I haven't made appearances <laughs> any other times just to make sure I can really wrench every sad tear uh every horrified squeal out of them um i'm not very so... successful to be honest with you but hey. every once in a while i hit a home run hey uh, kyle your favorite murder hobo fan is 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 watching right now fuck you heidi fuck. <laughs> I didn't... and speaking <laughs> of heidi let's go ahead and introduce my least favorite person on this show tonight uh, Carol, Carol, why don't you tell us about <laughs> I knew that was coming. Hey, everyone. As he said, my name's Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission Vinny Painter. I have my own Twitch channel, uh, Muses underscore Touch, where I paint minis and talk about whatever. And Kyle will come on there and actually we'll talk about this. Uh, I also can be found, I might as well add this, on the Hex Grid Heroes Starfinder podcast. So that's it. That's all. I think no, that's no it. Oh, no, I mean, do you want, oh, you want the cred thing? Fine. I am oh, one yeah, of those cred play. players. I'm one of those players that he torments on cred. And I freaking love every second of it. I Ooh, love it. taking a so turn much. here. Yeah. Oh, uh, Heidi says she loves you too. <laughs> uh, of course she does. I'm amazing. And I let her blow up Frank for free. It was great. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Moving on to uh, 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 our other panelists tonight, we have, and I have yet to meet him until right just now, Kevin. Hello. I love yes, your sideburns, Kyle, I... and I wish I had those sideburns myself. I've been dreaming of those. Oh, yeah. Well, sideburns. that's just because I'm getting older. Mm. Got the oh, you know on. what? That's why I feared. Full, okay. Yeah, it's a full, it's a full spread. But <laughs> um, you don't want me to take the hat off. Then it gets really funny. But uh, <laughs> um, you still got me beat there. But um, yeah, no, I'm Kevin, and I'm a cast member on Murder Hobo Inc. I'm on the Calamity game. I play Tall, a mysterious paladin who has joined the party recently and has a secret or two. And also, I've been doing some of the one shots as well. I'm here tonight doing some behind the rolls, done some other behind the rolls. It's just a cool place to be. And hopefully, I could be one of the cool kids like the rest of the murder hobos but when i'm not here you can find me online at Cabran games and also i have my own podcast uh which is called game night heroes which is a story driven narrative game where we play role-playing games and tell some cool stories and since you like to talk about cred we had our own little cthulhu game check out our freeport (laughs) campaign 32 episodes of dramatic storytelling pirate town with cthulhu cults awesome stuff uh, if i do say so myself so you can find that at game night heroes that's pretty cool. Dang it, he has more pirates in his cathedral. You know, though, if you really want... Well, there were lots of pirates. You know, if he was... had pirate ship fights, all kinds of cool stuff. I was going to say, if he truly was cool, though, he'd be on the cred side, right? Because cred is the best campaign in this entire channel. 
Hey, I, Carol, I'm, I'm, I'm I am the you host on? tonight. I am unbiased. I cannot say Good, un- which getting, campaign is better. Who do guess you think what? I am? I am a, you didn't have to <laughs> say it. I mean, that's I'm not the host, so I can throw whatever, you know, shit I want to. That's Carol, true. Carol, you shit can't ask me to join in that shit. I do. No, all right. <laughs> Before we start talking about our topic and the future games that we have coming up this week, we got to talk about last week. So starting last Thursday, we had the greatest of all campaigns yeah. on this network, uh, Fred. Uh, uh, Carol, I believe you were a part of that campaign, which is uh, wholly awesome and the best thing you've ever been a part of on this um, network. That's... <laughs> the, the, a certain uh, head of this pod, of this Twitch stream just wrote that he's going to cancel us better not oh then you'll have to take that space and run another campaign frank there, there you go He'll do it. so all right so what the hell happened oh my god i kind of still asking what the <laughs> hell <laughs> i wrote that today uh <clears throat> sorry frank is writing us notes uh so what the hell happened i kind of i was about to say i'm kind of still asking that question what the fuck happened um uh, i'm gonna who played who was well, there what happened i never freaking put who played all right well we had no we had no ernie so everyone else was there which would be uh jake playing merrick and myself playing anja and of course dj playing bran <laughs> uh so we we said we started hey stop that kyle did Hold on, let me find my note cards. Start counting you down before uh, I switch over to. You know what? Fuck it. Switch over now. <laughs> you want it? You want to see it? Watch the episode. I won't even tell you why it's relevant to tonight. Because oh, no. it's such a huge point. If you start doing you that, you want to go last. That way, you can sum up no. your feelings. You sure? No, no. So basically, what happened was, well, I'll start with the A squad, which was the three of us, and we had to roll back a little bit because we forgot a little unfinished business. We do that every session. I always have to roll something back. No, and no, no, no. I think uh, last session was just uh, accepting the consequences of your actions. No, that was, no, I, you mean what? Making the, I, we forgot to make the damn saves because Anja doesn't like to touch anything. And she basically saved Merrick by hugging him and jumping into the hole as the entire uh, warehouse full of black powder exploded. Uh, yeah. all about friendship <laughs> all about it is friendship. all about friendship i i made this i missed the saving throw and bumped up my dread to five but i did make the insanity checks like you <laughs> um and but we made our way out i'm said i'm gonna gloss, totally gloss over i want you guys to watch the episode because it was that freaking awesome watch it. um we made our way out and we we basically had a meeting spot and we wait. We were waiting there. So I'll get to the the actual part. The mm-hmm. the coolest part was um, then was Bran, who was in a face off with his brother and the magistrate in the burning house that he set on fire. Probably shouldn't have set the house on fire, <laughs> but it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, and the magistrate kind of fucked off, and the brother basically it was a showdown. And I believe Kyle made the anti monk. He basically made something that would face off well against him, and yeah, Bran couldn't get away and got basically murdered. <sighs> Fucking sad. Uh, the reason why this was so friggin' sad was Kyle. I don't know how much DJ had it, but maybe we'll get into that when we get into the actual show because I kind of want to go over that. Oh, but every death save, there was like a memory, or there was like uh, the the Raven Queen was present. And um, Jesus, that, that just broke my freaking heart. So you got me to cry on stream, you dick. Now nah, it was great. Um, but yeah, he, he said there was nothing really he could do. Dice rolls and stuff. And you had the dice rolls for sure, Kyle. And so Bran is gone. He is a crispy corpse. <laughs> At least I hope. Anja wants to go back into town so freaking bad to make sure that they don't fuck with his corpse. Yeah, sure, he's a crispy corpse. 
Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm just going to have to go back to that. You, you have to write that up. Um, anyways, the rest of us basically made our way around town and we went to the refugee camp. And I uh, said, I don't remember a lot of the stuff, so I'm just glossing over it. We made our way there and. You were making your way to the refugee camp. Yeah. Uh, you guys got lost. You ran into Oleg. Who, no, uh, no, Oleg came to the meeting spot. Oleg came to That's the how meeting we found spot. out Bran was dead. That's how you found out. Making your way. There you go. There you go. Making your way to the what? Making my way downtown. No, he came to the meeting spot. Tells Brandon he, he basically. Oh God, that's where. That's what really killed me. He had the mask, the burned mask in his hand. Mm-hmm. Um, I have the mask now. It's. I, I decided it's tied onto her belt. And uh, there will be, actually, there will be some bits because there was a short rest that somehow we never actually covered having uh, somewhere in our walk. But a lot of, a lot of the episode was the whole RP with Bran when he was dying. And, uh, but it was so phenomenal. You guys could have taken two hours on that, the whole episode, and I would have just eaten it up. I wouldn't care. Yeah, but we wouldn't have found out that Merrick has been married and divorced what? three times. And we, we didn't anyways because that never came out in the game. Yeah, it did. So when we left, when we basically we made our way around town. There was a short rest somewhere in there uh, that never showed up on game and um, which will probably have to be rehashed because it's something I need to get out there that I decided after the game. And then <clears throat> and then basically we we made, we found the refugee camp, sure, and it's been invaded by this monstrous thing that's shifting between what? You have not made it to the refugee camp. Oh, you it's have still before? encountered Captain Kenza, first mate Pasela, yeah, and the people oh, they that were smuggling wasn't... to the refugees. All right. Oh, oh, they... I figured they would be there by now. Never mind. No, I was paying attention. Ish. <clears throat> you know what, Frank? Go away. Just stop writing notes. No, uh, no, I thought, well, I heard, all right, I heard multiple screams. I thought it was the camp. Never mind. So, but yeah, so a monster caught up with the people who were leaving town and trying to make it to the camp, which apparently is a lot further away than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was, I thought it was going to be fairly close because you're going to move a lot of people. But, uh, but yeah, it's this monstrous thing. I forget the third. I remember one was a bird. What was an insect? What was the third thing that that monster was? Oh, some elongated slender man thing with claws. And everything yeah, it like was. That. All uh, right. So, yeah. Well, it was an ass blaster from. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. I forgot what the name of the movie was. Tremors? So, Tremors 3. Yes. <laughs> so oh, that's, yeah. I mean, that's just. Uh, real brief rundown. Um, if you want, watch the episode. I'm freaking serious. If you don't watch any other episodes on this channel ever, watch this one. This was so well executed. It was hey, this is, <laughs> executed. There we go. But it was so well done. And um, uh, next time, yeah, next time, Anja's going to be a little different. Uh, I believe there's a bit a little too much stress on her, so it's kind of manifests itself in some way. So I so clearly I need no, to that, write a really good recap for Carol before next time, so she remembers what well, actually happened. That was Thursday night. No, I'm cu- I'm deliberately to... cutting a lot of stuff out here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And what people moving watch the episode. on to Kevin, who I hope is a little bit more sober than Carol is tonight. <laughs> I haven't had anything to drink, so I mean, look, look, look. This is the state of my alcohol. It is empty. Okay, she drank it all. That's what happens when a PC dies. The other PCs just get rip roaringly drunk. It it happens. I wish I did. I mean, man, (laughs) that would have been that would have been good. But no, I I killed that. Actually, I killed that a couple times ago. There's only like ten shots in that bottle. (laughs) <laughs> All right, Kevin, you were in shots. Calamity on Saturday. I was. What happened, man? I haven't yeah, heard we did. about that show in a while. 
Yeah, Calamity is a lot of fun. We are doing the Calamity B-side right now. One of our players, Jesse, is uh, doing some personal family stuff. He's got another little murder hobo hanging out in the house, he and his wife, which is fun. Um, So congratulations to him. In case it has not been said anywhere else, I'm going to say it now. Um, He's a cool guy. Um, Yeah, so we're playing B-side, which is like our secondary characters. So I get to play as Ad Hoc, who is an old and by old, I literally mean geriatric silver dragonborn sorcerer who uh, apparently is a total Mac daddy. Because as we went through the episode, we continued our travels. Uh, we had recently destroyed some dams, tried to help out some villagers of the hometown of my character. Uh, I've recently joined the party in that as well. And as we continued along, we came across signs of a, let's just say nicely, a serial killer that we may have let loose. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're trying to. We're following good him, job. trying to figure out what's that? They said, "Good job." Oh yes, yes. Now, well, is that serial killer a monk and possibly a previous PC from Calamity? <laughs> you know, I'm not sure of that. Um, <laughs> what I do know so is, perfect. yeah. What what I do know is the episode it's where not. I joined B side. Um, <laughs> Uh, Rob was late and so what happened was his character got left behind in the town as we ventured out and as I ventured out um, he, they came to us in a boat this is a couple of episodes. came to us in a boat and I tried to blow up the boat because I'm a little trigger happy in my old age and uh, basically I did attempt to drown that boat now granted it did have Rob's character on it so that kind of got subdued but the serial killer was on that boat with him and escaped we found out later so uh, so yeah it is kind of our fault but, you know, not really. Uh, but anyway, serial killer is going around killing people, stabbing them with some antlers, which is kind of fun. And we came across a uh, lovely lady in the woods, a cleric of, I'm assuming, a god within the storyline, um, Blair. Um, that's the god. And then the lady is Manara. She basically joined with us and, of course, became immediately infatuated with my old crusty hook backed uh, geriatric dragonborn and we ventured along we found some more information some more clues as we continued along we had a couple of different encounters we fought some um well i'll cut to the big chase we fought uh on site i decided to get us some barbecue and i torched a family of pigs and that was fun so we killed mom and dad uh the only barbecue this week apparently yeah right (laughs) um so we torched mom and dad pigs, little baby pigs got away. So uh, that was fun. And, but we did arrive in the town we were heading to. So we are on a way. We just got to a place called Shades, where Manara is from. And we are just getting in there to uh, you know, settle things up. Oh, yes. Frank reminds me that Manara was vegan. So I did lose a couple of my points, you know. But, uh, you know, you can't keep ad hoc down. You know, he's still going to work for it. He's still going to make that happen. So. Uh, yeah, that was it in a nutshell. I mean, it was a little bit more to it than that, but uh, that's the broad strokes, as Carol would say. Did, did she tell everyone about it that she's vegan? Did she make sure that you all knew. Oh, it was a very big highlight of the episode. <laughs> oh, yes, Frank rolled for with a D twelve. He beat me, and it was really funny. Yeah, it was it was good stuff. <clears throat> good stuff. Um, yeah, it was a good episode. All right, and after that, they had the Margu campaign. Uh, I don't recall if it's B-side or not. On Sunday, I did not watch that episode, nor did I listen to that episode. The cool thing about that, though, is that was episode 500 for Murder Hobo. We have been doing this for a very long time. Uh, and We've just been doing it a lot. I mean, isn't it like, how many years old? I suppose like two, three years. One, two, three. Is it three years old? Four, I think. Four? All right. I mean, I think I was not here at the beginning. Oh, 2018 November, I'm being told. So, yeah, four years yeah, this November. Mm-hmm. Do it four times a week and you get to 500 really quick. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> the quality doesn't go too much higher. <laughs> Unless you listen to a certain Thursday night show. And oh, remember. yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. the of quality course. is... I mean, I mean, that's my unbiased opinion, however. don't. Yes, Frank's pointing out that, that Thursday show, of course, is cacophony. No, yes, no, no, cacophony, sure. The soap opera, the soap opera. Oh, no. He doesn't know what a soap opera is. Hey, soap opera's on for a very long time. Exactly. I know. You have great, amazing characters like Dibble yeah. Thibbet. 
<laughs> and for Herania and Rosa. Luke and Laura, you know, the whole the whole the whole yeah. gang's there, you know. Those two kids from the uh, Blue Lagoon. Stone face Verania, <laughs> dum dum. He wrote Stone Face Rosa. Rosa's <laughs> not the friggin' statue. That's Radia. So anyway, guys, <laughs> that gets us to episode five hundred and one. Unless he was not counting between the rolls as part of the count. Oh, I, I think, think he, he was. was. I, yeah, he I was. should hope so. Because this is the first episode of the biggest turnaround in all of history. Or it's just going to be more of the same, which is just brilliant. <laughs> That'll be fine. It just had more pictures of Hitler. Uh, for those oh, listening Jesus. on the podcast, I just want you to imagine Hitler in a sleek black dress, <laughs> uh, lovely pearls. Uh, Tasteful. Yeah. Hey, hey, wait, I got a question for Frank. Yeah, so he wrote in the chat next week, we dig up Gary Gygax. Literally? Oh, see, that was supposed to be a surprise, Frank. Are we Actually, that was Carol ruining and... the surprise. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Carol. <laughs> yeah, that's the one shot next yeah. week. We're fighting Gary Gygax in the ultimate dungeon. Oh, remembers. my God. Yeah, That would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tonight, getting back on to topic. What am I talking about? We'll never get there. We are talking okay. about <clears throat> the death. That is player character's death. Uh, because Max lived forever and your Lion X is about to die soon. Um, <laughs> nice. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, let's just go around the character. As uh -huh. DMs, how many players have you killed? Let's eh, let's not include one-shots here. Maybe we can include one-shots a little bit later. But how many players have you killed? And how None. many times has your character been killed? Oh, oh wow. that's tough. So I've been playing for 30 years. Carol is going to need a lot of time to answer this question, like every question <laughs> I ask her. Shut so, up. Kevin, do you think you could sum it up any faster? Oh, a rough estimate. Let's see. I have been a forever DM in my typical group since 2003. Uh, I want to say probably realistically, I probably have killed, I'm going to say, three dozen PCs. I don't Ooh. know. Probably, I, it's probably more than that. There was actually a period of time to get off topic slightly um when we first started playing fifth edition um the cr calculations between third edition and fifth edition are vastly different gang and uh for those of you who are at home who might not dm you might not be aware of this but they're vastly different and so when you pit certain enemies against your party they either wipe the floor with them or they get their asses handed to them and so i had a run of games about five in total i want to say uh, when we first started playing fifth edition in my home group, that TPK every single game for about three months. So that was fun. <laughs> that would really do it. Wow. Uh, anyway, we are now calling the FBI. We had them on the line. Yes. Uh, Kevin has just admitted to killing 36 players. Oh, at least. At least. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To run I, paranoid, I, why do they get keep coming worse? back? Is the question. Well, it's it's funny. I'm one of the, I'm a strange breed of dungeon master. I actually hate when PCs die. I'm one of those guys who sets a story up. You know this weird thing that we do. And so when PCs what? die, I'm like, oh bummer. Now we're never going to find out that their dad was actually a secret cultist doing blah blah blah. You know. Um, so I actually don't like it when. PCs when did you die. read the backstory of Brand's character? Oh. Uh... <laughs> another secret <laughs> but uh yeah no it's funny it, they've they've been just these scenarios um almost all those fifth edition scenarios are a pc of the party getting uh mind controlled so keep watch out for that yeah that would do it and uh how many times have you had your pcs die uh characters that i have played died i want to say realistically probably 10 times that's again these are very rough estimates it's probably higher for the number of pcs i've killed and lower for the pcs i've had played get killed but i um, imagine as a forever gm that would end up being the ratio yeah right right um yeah it, it, it seems to be uh that sometimes you know when i do break into playing people's games i just die every time it seems like <laughs> which is fun uh, join us in a couple weeks where Ad Hoc dies. And Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope not. All right, Carol, I've given you plenty of time. Yep. 
I need it. How oh, many, well. as a DM, how many PCs have you killed? Actually, and never. I've never killed a PC. I haven't wow. GM that much, though. So That is true, yes. Remember, I'm an occasional role. GM, and I've never... And I actually will go out of my way to not kill them. I mean, especially if you include the fact that a lot of my things are one-shots, because I was doing a lot of Pathfinder Society, you know, four-hour one-shot uh, things. And I think only once then, I thought I killed somebody, but I actually... And then I looked again at the rules. No, no, never mind. That's not times three. That's times two crit. Um, <clears throat> so, no, I didn't kill them. But, but yeah, there was one time I literally had to go way out of my way to not kill somebody because they had a just a, the worst built character. There was, they put all their money into a weapon they would never like use and never bought any. Well, I can only wear light armor. Well, that's why you buy freaking magic items to bump up your armor class beyond like a 13. It's like, I, I it's like I could, I practically couldn't, I could kid, kid him like item two. I mean, it was just, it was that bad. So I had to literally, I had to pull a lot of strings not to kill that character, but I probably should have. <laughs> All right, and how many times has the character have you died? Okay, so this coming back, from death is boring. Death is I, I do death is death is relatively boring. I like to skirt that line. Boy, did I this weekend. Um, <clears throat> so, so the Taryn, aka the character, I, same character I played in campaign one, mm -hmm. but I've played her on and off over the years. Uh, she's died twice mm -hmm. and been brought back. Uh, in two different campaigns. Then I didn't have anything die in a really long time. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to That's right, everybody. Happened. If you play tabletop RPGs for 50 years, your 30, characters 30. will also not die. I'm only due 50. To your wife I'm 50 you now. You never I die. Think. And if your dungeon master kills you, they are a jerk. You should immediately stop playing. Oh, God, no. I had the best freaking time. Yeah, I, well... They said not, I'm looking at, you know, David on there saying Luna, but Luna, all right, I'll get to that. So there was Taryn twice. Then there was, let's see, Rosa in the Skull and Shackles game, then Curly, and she did technically die once. Um, she, oh, there's the Star, that Starfinder podcast I mentioned. Uh, she's dead in the current little mini arc. I'm actually on hiatus there because I blew, I blew her up. So in a sense, me and the dice. So that's four. I'm forgetting somebody and it's not that. Well, do you I think, go up to 10, Carol? I don't think so. I think it's about if I include the one shots and you got Luna, then you got I have, had a skittermander that died in a Starfinder thing. And there's somebody else. Oh, she almost died on this chance station. Luna's dead, dumbass. What? No, Frank is going to Luna as he's killing. In Luna, the chat. Luna got killed. I don't read chat. I'm, I'm here. I pulled her out of this game. She may go in rotation. She may go, end up showing up on a table near you, but not in this game. Um, <laughs> I can't remember. I thought there was one more that I lost in a one shot. And I can't remember what it was. But, so I think it's about eight. All right. But not bad for 30 years. So I we could be forgetting about, something. <laughs> uh, Kevin, you are a DM who doesn't like to kill your PCs. Yeah. Um, so how often does it end up being your PCs who kill themselves? Um, and, well, and how do they do that, really? When it comes down to a PC death, how is it a PC's fault? Or maybe how is it the DM's fault when a PC dies? Sure. Um, well, it happens both ways, for sure. Um, what I've noticed in the 5th edition examples we were talking about, about mm -hmm. it's the most relevant game on our show um the something i have found is a lot of play there's two, two types of players you know you've got the typical murder hobos they want to fight and kill everything and then sure. you have the other kinds of players who don't want to um i'm going to say blow their load okay the, the, i've uh, never the play heard of that what are you talking about oh yeah I, i'm not sure what i mean by that uh but <laughs> players who um in the fifth edition games i specifically ran where they kept dying was they had a scenario where they have class abilities. They have certain number of spells. They have certain things at their disposal. Kind of what Carol was hinting at, where mm -hmm. you could have maximized your character a little bit better. Now I'm not blaming characters, of course, but if you've got a second level spell and you sit on it all fight, 
you know, um, and there's, there's always this mentality of certain players that I've noticed that they want to save everything in case they need it. And I think Dungeons and Dragons is really kind of designed to, you go big and go home with every fight. Um, that's why you take short rest. That's why you take long rest. That's why you break it down. Um, so the times I've seen players kind of kill themselves, it's, they're not utilizing all of their abilities or they're saving certain abilities for later in a fight, or they might even maybe might not have an idea of the best way to synergize what they can do. I mean, if you have a wizard who has a certain spell that can buff a certain way, but then they don't cast it on the whole party, is that the most efficient way to do it? And I'm not talking about power gaming. I'm just talking more about knowing what your character does, knowing what's going on. Um, I think the times that I myself have been completely default with characters dying it's been because of the fact of oh maybe i didn't read that ability as well as i should or maybe i didn't realize that you know the dc for that was so high um so preparation i think is kind of the key in both of these things you have to kind of i think really work through what you have what you don't have and figure out how you want to apply that and figure out what the best time to do stuff is at. um in a nutshell i guess sure Uh, now, uh, uh, that was an interesting topic. Uh, uh, you just kind of hit on uh, where we were talking about the DM's fault there, saying you hadn't prepped enough. You haven't looked at the monster stat. You didn't look at an ability. Now, obviously, we talked earlier about how you did not correlate third and fifth edition CR, uh, and you ended up, you know, TP. Well, it's interesting. I think it depends on when you've caught it, I guess you could say, like when Mm -hmm. the timing works out, if you have a scenario where you notice it right in the moment of, okay, I made a mistake and it hasn't passed yet. You can kind of rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. If it's a scenario where um, I'm not sure the scenario with credit, I've not watched the episode yet, but you have a situation where, you know, brand died and it's a whole way that it happened. And then much later, the rest of the party finds out it's kind of harder to backtrack that. Mm -hmm. Um, in the past, what I would always do would be, and this is back way back when I first started Dungeon Mastering, I would do the whole, you know, deus ex machina, you know, NPC shows up and saves them. Or literally, if they're a, a holy person, their god steps in and saves them. Uh, the monster, oh, a plot twist, I'm actually not going to kill you because of something else, blah, blah, blah. And I actually found over time that although players get upset that their characters die, I think they get a little bit more upset when they don't die for something that they can tell is you fudging it. Um, It's one thing if you do it in a way that's creative and it feels organic, but if you are running games where you've got, let's say six PCs and over the course of a couple of months, you've pulled that card on every single one of them. Mm. They realize, okay, he's pulling punches. He's letting us win. And some of the fun gets taken out of that, I think. It is still a game at the end of the day. You are still trying to accomplish goals. Um, so I think it's, it's timing. I think, though, if you notice right in the moment, what I would do is, I, I mean, I've, I've called it, oh, you know what? I, I did a fight one time where I literally was like, okay, you know what? This monster, I misread its ability. Uh, you know, I prepped this for a couple of days, and I misread the fact that when it swallows one of you, you get swallowed whole, you don't get back out, you go to a... Uh, mirror dimension these were dark mantles i think um and then you have a scenario where okay you know what guys backtrack that fight was ridiculous that just instead of like we'll go back to right when you're about to go into the room and maybe we'll do something different um you got to have to have buy-in from everybody with that i think to just say you're gonna do it's a little weird but to uh definitely talk with the group and say you know i made a mistake and let's take it back for a second a lot of times groups are cool with that especially if you're all friends and you're trying to tell a cool story together. Everybody's, everybody's all right with that. Uh, yeah, sure. That's what I think. I mean. All right. Uh, Carol, uh, going on a little bit more about PC death, and then we'll move on there. Since you uh, currently have died more times than anyone else on this podcast, how do you make <laughs> the death, so. how do you make death meaningful? Uh, I don't know. Why don't you tell them what you did? I'll let you answer. I mean, I, I, I apparently didn't get to answer the first question. Oh, well, if you want to answer the first question, go ahead. I think you should answer that one because honestly, 
I wasn't paying attention to my own question. The question was, <laughs> how do you make it meaningful? And I think you should answer that because you should tell everybody how, how you did what you did. Because that was amazing. The first question was, what? Whose fault is it, right? Um, about blowing up your own characters and stuff. Sure. It's a bunch. I mean, it's a bunch of factors. It, it really can be. I think a lot of times it's the dice rolls. More than anything else, it's dice rolls. Like, so as I said, I blew up a character. I literally blew up a character, but it was ultimately the dice rolls that killed him. Because, it all, I mean, it started with the fact, and this is Starfinder, so radiation is a thing in Starfinder. So basically it started right off the bat when I had to pull, a, there was like a bunch of power uh, batteries for a ship. And I, pull, I had to pull one of the power, or one of the power cores, and there were four. So talk about, it's like Russian roulette here. One of them was broke and leaking radiation. And I rolled a D4 because I'm like, I don't know, yeah. And I rolled, of course, naturally, the one I rolled was the one that was broken, which means that I had to make a save, which I rolled a nat one on. So now I'm friggin', now my character's got radiation poisoning and it's really bad in Starfinder. Uh, and ultimately, it's, it, it was, I looked up like, well, my chance of friggin' survival are slim and none since I got to roll like three nat 20s in a row. For three consecutive days so i was like all right i'm gonna blow up the character or i'm gonna do something really cool and once again it was dice rolls because even though what i did was monumentally stupid and i knew it was monumentally stupid i went and played with the shadow creature uh trying to see if radiation would do anything to it because i was a radiator and um <clears throat> well i had to make a fortitude save then a will save because i was trying to possess her and I made the first two. I made the I didn't make the fortitude save, friggin' standard. But I did make the will save the first go round, but I didn't get out fast enough. And I failed. I rolled a two and a three and bye bye character. So ultimately, it really is to me, the dice actually really have to me the biggest hand on your character dying. And even like what happened to Bran, I, you know, if he made, if he, if he didn't, you know, if he, he rolled, he went down to the wire too. He, he made two successes and then he made three failures. He could have survived, you know, unless you were gonna, yeah, you know, you're doing the thing that Frank probably should have done to Taryn in campaign one. And that was just said, you're dead. You had an artifact that blew up, you're dead and not rely on any dice rolls. So I think sometimes True, the narrative- you didn't have a passive perception of 23. So I think it was okay <laughs> if your character lived. Yeah. Brand had to go. Without a it. leg and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the game was over anyway. So it really didn't matter. It would have been sad, but it, I would have been okay with it. Um, but as, as I said, I think there's a lot of factors, you know, that go in. And it can be it can be the player decisions and it can be the GM. As you said, sometimes maybe you overtune that encounter a little too much. Uh, usually when I'm a GM, though, I try to, if I feel like it is overtuned, then I start, I start, I get to a point where the, the PC is about to die. And then I, real, I say, OK, you killed it because I know I fucked up and I'll try to pull it back before everyone dies or before anyone dies. Mm -hmm. If I feel that it's just an unfortunate case of a bad dice roll, then, then it stands. But I've never had anybody, I guess that my players are luckier get to versus me than I am against the GM. So, but yeah, that's so. And now why don't you answer the question and how did you make Brand's death meaningful? Because this was, Friggin' awesome. And as I said, Critical Role can eat their hearts out because that was spectacular. So tell them what you did because it was Molly so good. Monk's death was nothing. You That's thought right. Scanlon's death was heartbreaking? Actually, Scanlon's, Scanlon's? very, very heartbreaking. In that first think... campaign, everybody died. Yeah, everybody, everybody died campaign. once. I don't remember how Scanlon died. That's uh, all right. He died, and then uh, it was uh, Grog saying, Fix him! I, I kind of remember that. Um, heartbreaking. Anyway, so yeah, tell them what you did because this was friggin' the shit. Uh, as only this past session, as I said, was dealing with the consequences of what the players did. Um, <laughs> they had a bit of a uh, a, a heist like scenario, um, which I stole ideas from a uh, a different game called Blades in the Dark to kind of help 
uh, supplement that. And I allowed the players to play, uh, uh, play the story a little bit. And so uh, Bran, the DJ, decided that, hey, we're going to set fires to make a distraction. Uh, and it hasn't rained in town in a long time. So these fires are really going to go fast. <laughs> it was logical. And it, it actually, you know, worked in our favor in some ways. It really did. did uh, work except when favor. you decide to light the house that you're going into on I fire. Do, I don't <laughs> understand why you did that, that order. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had that and it was answering the consequences and then just kind of figuring out, you know, uh, uh, what DJ the player wanted to do, what Bran the, uh, the character wanted to do, and how I wanted to represent uh, uh, his stepbrother, his older stepbrother, uh, who was the uh, leader of the uh, uh, the colony of uh, not colony, um, the occupiers of Farzeen. Um, and of course, it's is this the big bad evil guy or is this one of the higher ups? If your player runs into that situation, uh, they do have to answer for that. And do you make them weaker because they decided to approach it by themselves? Uh, I opted nah, to say no, although I did make the situation better by making sure that he wasn't ganged up upon. Um, and even though his brother hated him very much for multiple reasons. Uh, stealing his father's love most of all um, oh you ever answer a question and then forget how you were you were asking question? you're going over how you made his death meaningful you haven't even got to the part I was talking about talking to the part there okay uh, and so we had a fight duel out where Bran just tries to figure hey are they mind fucking with my brother or is this someone who needs to die because he is a truly evil person um whether brand got that answer or not we don't know um but he was eventually struck down trying to escape uh as carol said i made the anti-paladin uh, uh or the anti-monk anti -monk, yeah, who sorry. happened to be a paladin uh who was made to shut down movement uh Ability stolen from uh, the Oath of Conquest uh, and Sentinel because, you know, you don't want people to get away from you. Uh, and so he... Keep that in mind. There you go. There's your metagame, Carol. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. You won't really... Gamer, she... You have to watch out for her. Nah, anyway. I was going to say, that's Andrew's just going to attack with reckless abandon from now on, so... Once What's Bran had figured out, you know, what the deal was with his stepbrother, he tried to escape. Um, unfortunately, having the tar beaten out of him just from the rage fueled from his stepbrother, uh, he went down and he was unable to escape uh, uh, from the house. Um, before his brother had a chance to slit his throat, uh, the magistrate walked in, said, we don't have time for this. He can burn in the building, make it look like an accident. Uh, and they left, and so Bran was left to deal with his death saving throws. <laughs> and so, as we described the house going up in flames, you know, you just ask the player, "Hey, these could be your final moments. What's what's going through your head? Uh, what's going through your character's head?" And we had Bran describe um, his time um, growing up as a child. Um, even though it was his stepfather who was Lord Corwell, uh, and uh, he was actually just some bastard um, child from his mother's thing, we we find um, him being bullied by his older brother. Uh, yet his older brother being the one who ends up facing the consequences. Uh, we also find out that his mother. Uh, had scales as well. Um, we knew that though. We yeah. characters did my character didn't, but I knew that you you made. It's been said that she was a deep one. 
Yeah, that's correct. That's right. Mm -hmm. But my character doesn't know. We we actually <laughs> confirm in a flashback. Yep. Uh, and then I had him make another death saving throw after we kind of worked that scene together. Um, and he succeeded again. I said, well, what else do you remember? And he talks about his time as a monk and how um, he had been viciously scarred in order to, you know, be closely brought to the brink of death and then brought back so he could just understand what suffering was, maybe get an idea of what death was and how this monastery just really fucks with the people who are the monks it's, there. And, and when, you know what, the, I just remember, interestingly enough, like the last thing you said there was, and when it was time to, to let go. To go, just when, when was life not worth saving anymore? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's an interesting thing that that was basically where that ended on. Yeah. I had, then we had to make another death saving throw and he failed. And as he failed, we described the room burning down around him, a shadow appearing in the corner of this incredibly well lit room. Turns out rooms on fire are very well lit. <laughs> Lots of light. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was at that point where um, I continued with Bran's uh, peek behind the screen uh, with Bran's consequences is that the previous heist, he had a flashback where he managed to convince someone to help him out in creating a distraction, someone who was actually right outside the house. Um, now, that wasn't their intended role, but I thought to myself as a DM, that wouldn't be that's a possibility that's a lifeline that the that he put out there himself that could potentially save him and so while i was describing the shadow growing in the room i rolled for the oleg was his name the bell ringer unfortunately he was pissing his pants terrified to enter uh the room especially with so many uh people around uh and so it was up to brand to uh, make his death saves. Um, unfortunately, he failed again. The Raven Queen came out of the shadows to greet him. Um, as I said, it could have been the Bell Ringer, but unfortunately it was not. Some of this was planned, some of this very much not. And finally, um, before the third save, we had the uh, the Raven Queen speak to him one-on-one um, -on -one and mention actually truly what a worse predicament he was in as, even if he died. Uh, unfortunately, you know, being contaminated, cursed with uh, uh, Deep One lineage does not do, does not bode well for one's soul. Uh, and so uh, we made sure to get that across. And then he failed his third death save and was left in a fire. Oh, gosh, what did we end it on? The sound that was, of that... cold, rushing water fills his ears. So... But I think the, the point that I was mm -hmm. trying to make, which that was a great, exp although one thing that I'll, I'll point out that you point out to me was every time he succeeded, it was a memory. Every time he failed, it was the Raven Queen, mm -hmm. which I thought was friggin' that was pretty brilliant. And um, but I think you gave that death tremendous, you and he both, because it took both of you to do it. Mm -hmm. You gave it tremendous meaning. And as for how I'm going to do it, um, I think I did. I, you said you two literally, you, you made me cry. I mean, that's how good it was, but also I, I did lean into it because for the sake of role play, um, Andre would be friggin' devastated by this. I, it's weird because we haven't <laughs> known each other that long, but he made an impact on her. I will say the hardest part about that night was trying to keep a straight face as I killed Bran and I saw Carol just <gasps> yeah oh, I was, in the corner was, and I was like yeah but it oh, really yeah. is but it oh really, this is terrible I mean, no no it was it was it was it was terrible and beautiful at the same time mm -hmm. um it was to me the height of storytelling 
And if you actually, the other thing is that maybe, I don't know if this makes it meaningful or what, but it's the fact that this is going to change the entire trajectory of, of where Andre was going to go class-wise. This was the this was the breaking point of where I go now. So, um, so I think you know keeping that you know I, I don't want to say cry at your table, folks. That's not it. <laughs> well, it uh, sounds don't to me, do that. But sounds, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. Good. No, I was no, just gonna she'll, say she'll keep talking. You it sounds ahead. to it sounds to me what you're saying in a nutshell is basically if you have a PC that's going to die and you want it to be memorable is you need to make it more, uh, I'm sorry, you need to make it about more than just that moment. Yeah. You need to bring out a bigger picture. You need to make it be, um, the reason why I hate to have PCs die is because a lot of times in the games when a PC dies it, at my table, it's something like, oh, I misjudged how many hit points an orc has in this specific fight, and you they just outlasted you. To me, that's a lame death. If it's something like you're talking here where, you know, the pass came up to catch up with him and he didn't have a way out and this was just his time it's a much more emotional moment it's a much bigger moment and if you make it about more than just the fact that this character is going to die you make it about something bigger than that um you keep the player involved in it too i think is what it sounds like we're hearing you say um i played at tables where the dungeon master is like yeah you take 10 hit points oh i'm at negative six. Oh, you're dead and they move on like it's not a big deal and some tables are like that you know you're Old school man gaming is much different than current day gaming. Current day gaming is very much more emotional. It's I'm going to say role playing instead of role playing. If that yeah. makes sense. It's a lot more care. People are tied to their characters. People have emotional stakes. Um, not that original D and D wasn't like that, but even just from the time of the early 2000s to now, when I played, it was a much different landscape. It was more fighting all the time and if you died you just had a new character you, you'd roll up a new character while the rest of the party kept playing and then they'd meet your character in the next bar <laughs> and it wasn't even a thing and nowadays people they've got character art commissions and they've got you know backstories that they write and they're writing fan fiction and people really get into it um so yeah if you make it about the player having a agency with that death it could be a lot more memorable i feel like yeah, it and and the thing of it is too. I said as by somebody else who's at the table, I think you know the other players can make it memorable too. Just by you know, it can how it how they react to it. So like you know, and sometimes the dice, the dice friggin' I swear to God, no, I swear to God, they sometimes know when to roll friggin' real well. Because I had somebody, I was, it was, believe me, it was in like a one shot too. It was in a Pathfinder scenario. And the guy, one of the, uh, one of the guys had like finger of death cast on him and he died. He, or I forget, it was one of the things, he had to make two saves and he failed them both and died. And I went next and I'm playing a paladin and there's like an undead right there, like the lieutenant. And I basically nat 20 him and friggin' murdered him. Like, you know, I'm like, you know, take that death and give it meaning and, and give, give, add it to your play. You know, I think, I think really is part of it too. And I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that freaking moment. Cause it was so, it was such a cool moment, you know, that, you know, and said, so thankfully in Pathfinder, you can get your characters resurrected at the end of the session. <laughs> and it was the last fight. Um, but yeah, it's it said it's what you do with it. It said in, in my case, my reaction is going to go beyond just what happened last session too. So, and and if your character does come back, I mean, it's sort of fun to role play out some things that you know you died. So maybe something there should be some sort of an effect around you. So when Rosa died, she came. They brought her back because they had a raised dead scroll. Uh, that's wrong. And we can't bring Bran back because we've got no way to do it. And it's no like on the list that said, well, quest for resurrection. It's like this this group is, you know, can't yeah, probably really can't fit that in. And I don't think there's any intention of bringing him back. So after yeah. the PC death, let's move on to there. Oh, yeah. Both of you've mentioned it. In sure, it's what ways. time it is. Old, yeah, I know. We're going it's just like, oh my gosh. I knew we were going to go along because it's a great topic. That is true and i had you on the show and i knew oh shut up 
Uh, luckily, there's no... Uh, this makes up for the half hour we ended early last cred. 15 uh, minutes. So it was 15 it, minutes. <laughs> it was only anyway, 15 minutes. So, let's talk about the player character has died. Um <sighs> Do you do what I did in a session? Do you try and kind of end a little bit early so that person is not necessarily sitting there? Do you let them come up with a character as quick as you can, especially if we're story oriented? Mm. Do you maybe just say, yeah, we're going to come up with a backstory. You take the week to kind of figure it out. Do you allow your camera to refocus on your beautiful, <laughs> beautiful face or do you just stay a fuzzy Fuzzy man. <laughs> it's focused on Cthulhu. Friend. That's all it needs to be. Yeah, that's it. It's focused on Cthulhu. That your camera, man. He's like, you <laughs> rang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and how do you decide what that action is? I mean, if the players decide, you know, we love that character so much, we have to go uh, find all the diamonds and we have to carry him to the highest priest, priestess in the land. We've got to bring him up. What does that player character do in the meantime? Or do they just say, you know Ooh, what? I can't answer that. It was his time. He had a good death. It's time to bring on a new character. Um, how do you guys as DMs and or players react to after the PC death? And let's go ahead. We heard a lot from Carol and myself. So Kevin, back to you. Well, there's two things that I've, I've done in that scenario. The one, of course, being um, the player, especially if you're doing like a shorter campaign, it's almost over. Let's say, for example, <laughs> it's a one shot or let's say it's it's a six episode thing and you're on episode five and that person dies. Well, then you can have the PC play favorite NPC number three on the left. Um, I ran a game one time where they got attacked by goblins early in the game. They captured one, turned him into their mascot. And so when one of the player characters died, she proceeded to play this goblin that had been following them around the whole time. Um, so she still got to play and still do stuff. And it was immediate. She could just keep playing. But, oh, now I'm playing Boblin, you know, and doing that. Um, but what I typically do is I let the PC... Um, I've never really had a table that I've played in in all these years, surprisingly enough, that have gone on the epic quest to revive an ally. Um, they've always just been like, oh, okay, yeah, he died, or okay, yeah, she died, and they just move on. So I've always done it in a way where that player makes a brand new character. It's the same level as the rest of the party. Um, I've Again, I've played in tables where, oh, okay, you're six level characters. Well, you died, now you're level one good luck catching up and that's really uh, hard <laughs> that's yeah. really hard on players um but again i think it's an old school thing um but i just you know, i'll keep it the same level same power level roughly so if it's a situation where let's say everybody in the group has certain amounts of magical items that new player will have a certain same amount too that way everybody's balanced magic um, items yeah yeah magic items What's yeah magic items <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, that's a Kyle up, Carol, shot. you're that's fine. A um, Take your mirror blade and shove it. That's it. <laughs> um, just because it's it's it's. I think it's more fun. I feel. I personally, my mentality is: if you take, if you have a, a player die, and you, the way I view it is, penalize them by having to be a lower level, or they don't get the same as everybody else. Um, you're kind of keeping the player at the same level that they've earned, even though they're playing a new character, I guess, if that's the best way to put it. Um, so I've always just done it that way. Um, and usually that revolves around that player will do a character that comes in the next session. It's been pretty rare that I've had somebody, you know, unless you have the typical, okay, well, my fighter just died. Well, now I'm here. I'm his twin brother who walks in. Have you seen my brother? Oh, he's dead. Oh, no, I'm going to avenge him. And he's all of a sudden in the party. Uh, yeah. We've all had that. But <laughs> Oh, my gosh, it's Luke from Back from the Grave. No, I'm his twin brother, Duke. Right. But I want you to feel as calm and collected about this as possible. So you can call me by my dead brother's name, Luke. If you right. Know. Sure, sure. <laughs> um yeah, so I mean, but uh, <laughs> that was good. The uh, but yeah, just continuing on with it, yeah, just having it be a new character that just kind of pops up the next time they have an opportune moment. Um, I, I'm also I'm a big fan of a lot of times I'll introduce a new character in a party gets a wandering monster, wandering monsters fighting, and 
new player happens to come in in this combat and join them. That way there's an immediate like, oh, this guy fought with us or this girl fought with us and we're together as opposed to you meet in a tavern because I've had players, well, we don't know him. We're leaving. <laughs> and you got to really work to get the new PC into the group. Um, but I digress. No, yeah, that's fine. No, that's part of it. Carol, what do you do as the player character or DM after a player dies? Uh, typically, it's the same thing. You re-roll it. I mean, as for whether or not, usually, to me, the more story-driven, the like on this, if I die in this, I'd be tempted to take a week off so and come in at a fairly when is convenient or what the you know frank just said do it Kyle. do it <laughs> so um uh i you know I, i've been saying i've been tempted to take a like an entire week off to give a buffer between the old one and the new one although the interesting thing is with with dj and brand I mean, he spent most of his time in that mask He will look completely different on the stream, so it may it may work out. I won't look so different. So, but I mean, but that's 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 a storytelling stream where we're we're doing this for an audience. A home game. I mean, if they join, if they can roll up a character, that that's what they can do during the rest of the session. Um, you know, and they want to bring it in. Sure, I'll let them come bring something in right away. I don't want I don't want people to be bored. Right. No, I don't want them to sit there if we can find a place to put them in. If we can't, well, then they get to sit there. But usually that's the deal. If it's a home game, I mean, it's not, you're not performing for a group of people. So it's, you know, you, you can do whatever basically you want there. Um, but if they can't, you know, they can spend that session to the rest of that session, actually rolling up a character and writing up a backstory and stuff. I, I said, I haven't, I haven't, that's the thing is, I don't think I've permanently lost, other than the one shots, I don't think I've permanently lost a character. We've When they've died, either we've had, like with Rosa, way back in the, not on the Murder Hobo, but in, in the Skull and Shackles, we had a thing that was essentially was a raised dead scroll. So basically I was just out till we could get there and and bring her back, you know, and that's usually what happens, you know, now we're level 12 in that game. So if I've died, we're going to, we have the resources to basically bring them right back. And that, that find is usually what happens that, you know, you don't low level deaths. That's the, that's the tough one. And like brand died, we're too low level and we do not have the resources to do it. So hence, he will be bringing in we another. We have a host rule where uh, you uh, actually have to treaty with a God or goddess of death before a player can actually cast revivify or or any of those resurrection spells that is just crazy i forgot about so, that part but, yeah, no, <laughs> but we don't i don't think we i don't know if we have a way to do it anyways in our group it's fine i mean it's fine because he is i i know what he's i don't know what i just know what class he's he's bringing in Okay. I know he's creating a new character and he's going to, and, and he doesn't know when you want him to come back. I assume it's next session though. Never. No. But no, that's, no. yeah. I mean, that's so how a dungeon master whittles down his problem players. It's down to 14 or something like that. He could come back. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's basically, if you're a DM, you don't want your players to be bored. Right. You know, you, you want them to have fun. And this said, if you're not doing something like this where you're performing for a group of people, just let them roll the character quickly and bring it back in. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. if unless there's some. Oh, and actually, we did have the hat. We, we did Curse of Strahd, and my husband's character got killed by Strahd, who was fucking nice. mad at us because we stole his precious little dragon skull he was keeping prison there. And I forget what else. We, we basically fucked with him too much, and he came in and, and blew us up. and he went after, this is how you kill a PC, by the way. We never get to that. You target one party member and you keep hammering them and you keep hammering them. And then when they drop, you, you freaking basically hit them as to making them, you know, yeah. go through death saves. Because they can basically, yeah, well, you need to hit them twice because it's a, it's a crit and that's two fails. So you need to hit them twice. But that's how you kill C. And that's otherwise you're just saying it's a coup de grease. But that's how basically my husband's character got killed. So what did he do? He made a new one and he played it, played it for a few weeks. 
and then we actually managed to get the old one back. And then he had a choice. He could have played. We let him have a choice of when I was going to play the old one or the new one. He actually went back to the old one. So that you can also create a character just to, you know, even if you're even if you're going to, um, even if you're going to bring him back, you can still create a character for the interim, or you can play an NPC or something. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And yeah, he, he yeah, it, it was his favorite. It was a character he played before, and he really liked this character. So. But it's too bad because the character he had made to replace it was like a sun, what's it, a sun soul monk? Oh, cool. Freaking Ravenloft. So think about that one with all the That'd Raven. be awesome. So oh, yeah, you right. would have well, guys, everything. Ten minutes over. Uh, I think I could have talked another two hours on myself back this. between the roles here. I've had Hitler on the show. Oh, uh, Jesus. We've said inappropriate things. Carol went on for, for way too long. Oh, bullshit. Uh, we haven't made Kevin completely regret being here, but He's happy I'll take my shirt off at the end and that should do it. Oh, but let's go around through that's uh, off camera. Uh, last thoughts. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, last thoughts about death, about anything you like. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it sucks if you're a player, but it can really bring to, to me, it brings a really great level of drama to your game but try you know but most people don't like to lose the characters so if you're going to kill somebody at least and th when they get the killing bow make it meaningful do something really cool like kyle did um that's you know make it worth it make it worth it their while i guess would be my statement <laughs> okay. kevin final thoughts uh yeah well, I agree with that. And also I, you know, it is a game at the end of the day. Uh, don't be upset. Don't take it personally. Right. That your character died. Um, it's 900 times out of 901 times. It's not the dungeon master. I'm going to kill this guy to mess with them. It's really just your character just died because that's how it turned out. Um, Dice it's, rolls. it's pretty rare that a dungeon master is going to hate kill your character. Yeah. If they do, there's other Super problems rare. that you probably would have noticed before. <laughs> hey, Ka hey, Kyle. Hey. Hey, you said, who's the moderator here, Kyle? It's not my fault that you went over. Uh, it absolutely was Heidi's fault. I saw her <laughs> on the screen. And I was like, ah, I got to waste as much of Heidi's time <laughs> as possible for that one time she screwed Hi, up my one shot. And, so... and now we will read the phone book. That was the character. That was the other character I was trying to remember who died. It was the one in your friggin' heist one shot. She died. Yeah. Because I blew myself up. <laughs> That's right. I killed myself. You blew yourself up a lot, Carol. Good job. <laughs> oh, it is something. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't technically explode this time. Hmm. I got possessed in the Starfinder game. My final thought, if you're a DM out there and your players are like, oh, but death is so boring. Death is so boring. Well, Immediately is... turn your gaze and kill the person next to them. And that's well, how you do it. Guys, I want to say thank you for watching the show tonight. Uh, and thanks to our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice and Adventure Sense, Oddfish Game Shine Project, Ireland RPG with your cat, and the Taste Test, the Acid Test, I believe is the one it's called. Well, uh, big thanks to those guys, and thank you for having Carol and Kevin on here. Uh, maybe you. I will come <laughs> back if we have such lovely conversationalists like this more regularly. We do all the time. No snarky comment. There you go. All right, everyone, wave at the camera. Say goodnight. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us.